In a previous video, you guys asked for more UI stuff. So in this video, I'm going to be going over all of the UI tricks I know, and I'll be sharing them with you guys. So let's get right into it. So this first tip is one I have covered many times in my other videos. When you have a UI stroke in your text label and that thickness on the UI stroke is bigger, it causes this overlapping in the text, as you can see here with the A and B. This gets really annoying when you're making your UI and fixing it is as easy as going to your UI stroke, going to the line join mode and switching it to either bevel or miter. Both fix it here and now the overlapping where you could see through the UI stroke is now gone. This next one has to deal with using progress bars in your games and also using UI corner with them. So our progress bar looks fine how it is right now, right? But let's move the actual thing lower down as if we were showing low health or something. As we get smaller down the to the value, we can see it is bugging out. So when the actual bar gets down to a certain size, it starts to have that weird, I don't even know how to describe it, issue where it doesn't actually fit in with the background as you can see here, it does not look very good. So how we can actually fix this is by using a canvas group. So instead of our background here, we are going to insert a canvas group and basically make it look like what you already have here. So I'm just going to do that real quick. So then when you've made your new background, which is now a canvas group, and insert your bar into the canvas group by default clip descendant should already be enabled in the canvas group i don't know if there's an actual property for it but if we have our bar here and scale it down really small we can see that the small issue there from up here is now gone and it makes your progress bar look 10 times better when you don't have that clipping and not perfectly fitting in your bar and so the next thing is make sure you guys are using UI aspect ratio constraints when you're making your frames. This makes sure that the frame sizes are copied on all devices. So I have my frame here and it looks nice, right? But let's go take a look on other devices. We are looking on the iPad 7th gen and you can see that it makes the frame skinnier. And we can check out uh, another device like an iPhone. It looks about the same, maybe a little shorter. So we need to make sure our frame has the same appearance on all devices. And this is where we use UI aspect ratio constraints. And you go to it and you go to the properties and you configure the aspect ratio to whatever you guys want and to make it look like your old frame. So this is going to be our old frame and this is going to be our new frame with the UI aspect ratio constraint. And I think I've just about got it to be the same thing as it was. I set 0.9 for the aspect ratio. So it looks just about the same as our old one. And going back to our seventh generation iPad, we can see that our new one looks a lot better it doesn't configure the height or make it look skinnier or anything like that it looks the same as it did here and if you guys wanted to see it on a few other devices here's this the iphone 6 iphone xr looks about the same but the big thing here is the ipads it helps the ipads a ton because the ipad has that bigger screen size that makes stuff look taller so here is an average laptop and xbox and then a PS4. And the next thing I thought was really cool is when you're trying to make a system where you can switch between different screens, I highly recommend you guys use UI page layout so you don't have to make your own system because as you can see here, I'm flipping between these two frames and we could add a few more if we really wanted to. So we can flip between all of these frames without the need of any scripts or anything like that and in the properties of the ui page layout you can check if it's actually animated or it just cuts between the different ones circular 
makes it so when you are at the last element, it goes back to the first one. And you can even change the easing direction, easing style, the padding, tween time, and everything like that. You can even change the alignment, how you want everything. But I do recommend you guys have another UI padding in it because without it, it makes it look like this. Or I'm using UI padding to make sure that it is fitting in the middle just like this. And in the padding of the UI page layout, if you set it to zero, you may get uh, another frame with the first frame so you can see there's the you could barely see the second one so you could maybe you guys want to change the padding in the UI page layout so we don't see that so have you guys ever had to deal with the scrolling frame size when you have a scrolling frame and you have all the things inside of it but you want to get the canvas size of the scrolling frame just right so it fits everything here so as you can see here I have five scale for the Y and if I were to set this to one well there isn't much room to scroll and if we wanted more items down here we would have to constantly keep updating this to make sure everything fits but I have a script for you guys that updates the scrolling frame sizes based on the amount of items in there but the thing about this is that it only works the system I have only works for UI grid layouts so this example I have here for UI list layouts would not work. So now I have this frame with a whole bunch of template frames, mainly to be used as some type of inventory system. But what we actually need to do is insert a local script wherever you guys want to insert it. I think it'll just be easiest to insert it in our frame. And then we can start by getting our player game.players.local player and we also need the player GUI which is player dot player GUI and then the one service we need is run service so we're going to use run service to constantly run a function sort of make a new function and we're just going to call this updates to keep constantly updating the scrolling frame and we can start off by saying for underscore and we are going to get every scrolling frame in player GUI, get descendants, do, and then we're gonna check if the scrolling frame or whatever we found is a scrolling frame. And then we are going to get the grid layout, the UI grid layout. So scrolling frame, find first child of class, and then UI grid layout. Then we need to actually check if we have the UI grid layout in our scrolling frame. So if grid layout then, and we're gonna get a content size Y from the grid layout. So grid layout dot absolute content size dot Y. And then we're going to set the scrolling frames canvas size udem to dot new and set zero for all these and then say content size y and then just for ease of use i'm just going to say run service dot render steps connect function so it'll keep constantly running every render step and we're going to call update so notice now that we have a ton of room past our frames here see there is a ton of just blank space down here and then going into our game we now have no extra space down here and the size is updated so that all of our frames are here and there is no need to constantly be updating the scrolling frame canvas size and yeah guys this was today's video if you guys did learn something from this video or you guys enjoyed this video please hit the like button and the subscribe button i'll see you guys in the next video peace